Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs, and today I have this really fun rainbow birdhouse slimline card to share with you. So let's jump right in. So I'm going to make a slimline card, and I like to make my slimline cards out of a full sheet of cardstock. I cut off the four inches, and then when I score it, I score it at the three and a half mark. So I end up with a three and a half by eight and a half inch card base uh, and then I'm cutting down here I'm cutting uh, this is going to be the panel that I blend on and I'm cutting it to be a quarter of an inch smaller than my base and then this is going to be a black mat and I'm cutting that to be an eighth of an inch smaller than my black uh, than my base so I like to mat everything I don't know if you guys have been around on my channel for a minute but I have a tendency to mat everything and when I make slimline cards because the trimmer is smaller than what I'm trying to cut uh, I do have to kind of eyeball it and go back and forth. Now, of course, you could obviously bring in a bigger trimmer, uh, like a 12 by 12 trimmer or something, but I, I have a harder time keeping that in frame. So I find this just easier. And then I just kind of go back and forth and trim it uh, until I have exactly what I want. So I am going to score my base at the three and a half mark and then fold it in half. And that is my slimline size. Now it's anything that fits in a 10 size business envelope is a slimline card. This is just the size that I prefer. There's no right or wrong size. Uh, you could really do anything you like. This is just my preferred size. And then I brought in the cloud. I think it's the rolling cloud stencil by MFT. And it's awesome. So like the rolling, I just rolled the stencil over and I'm able, I'm able, I'm able to continue the uh, stencil cloud line, which I think is really cool. There are, of course, slimline stencils out there. You could buy and do this. This just happens to be in my stash. I actually have some slimline uh, cloud stencils, but they have other things in the inside. So instead of trying to mask and, and do all that, I just use this. And I have shaded lilac distress oxide ink that I'm using on the background and just a mini or I guess it's a small blending brush from Simon's Snap. They just came in today. In fact, uh, I've been waiting for these since Black Friday, but uh, as I live in Canada, sometimes packages take a little while to get to me. So I am starting to use these now and I'm really excited about them. So they are kind of my first official set of blending brushes. And I got the whole set because I got them on sale on Black Friday. I think it was like 30% off. So I got uh, the 10 small ones and the 10 large ones. So it'll be really fun to try them out. And I wanted a more subtle look. So that's why I used the blending brush. You could, have used, of course, use any blending tool that you have. But uh, I find the blending brushes just give me a lighter hand because I tend to be a bit heavy handed. And then I brought in some perfect pearls and just splashed them on the background because I love the look of shine and shimmer every everywhere and then I have a piece of distress watercolor card stock this is the pre-cut ones that are cut to the five and a half by four and a quarter and I'm just going to cut it into quarters because I knew that my bitty birdhouse die was quite small and I didn't want to waste a whole bunch of cardstock uh, cutting out and like spraying the backgrounds. So I cut this into quarters and I make six of them because I, I kind of had eyeballed that six little birdhouses would fit on my background. So I cut down the four from the one sheet and then two off of a second sheet. And I am using a watercolor cardstock because I'm going to use sprays to create uh, my birdhouses. I wanted some variation in the color. Of course, again, you could use uh, like colored cardstock, you could use ink blending, you could whatever any way you like this would work. Uh, I just really wanted to bring out my sprays and play with them and I thought it would be a really fun way to get some color variation on my birdhouses. So I am going to bring in quite a few colors here. Now the mica sprays I don't believe are available anymore. They are the ones that Tim Holtz brought out uh, limited edition. I have both the Halloween and the um, Christmas sets. So I just pulled whatever color I wanted to match one of my oxide inks. So the colors I'm using, the pinks were, and it's distress oxide sprays and then mica spray stains. Uh, so the colors are picked raspberry and winterberry. And then I used carved pumpkin and flickering candle and no, sorry, and jack-o'-lantern, squeezed lemonade, lemonade and flickering candle. There you go. There's flickering candle right there, actually. Uh, and then I used for the blue, no, I guess we're doing green next, twisted citron and bubbling cauldron. And then for blue, it was 
peacock feathers and snow flurries. And then for the purple, I did seedless preserves and hocus pocus. But as I said, I don't believe you can actually buy the mica sprays anymore, but you could use literally anything to create these backgrounds. This was just me really wanting to play with my sprays. Uh, that's kind of what created this uh, thing. And I do spray every panel with water first so that the colors will move. And I only spray them once or twice. Uh, just, I want a little bit of mica in the background, but not, I mean, these, these are small, right? So there's no point in dousing them with a ton of color because you're just going to miss the, the panel anyway. So it's just going to end up in the box. So I didn't want to waste a whole bunch of color, but I love the variation. Like I love how these turned out between the spray stain mica, like the shimmer and the oxidation of the oxide. Like they just, they turned out really neat and they give you some variation in the color, which I think was really pretty. And I did bring in my uh, heat tool just to speed up the heating process there or the drying process there. And then here I have the Simon Says Stamp Biddy Birdhouse die and I'm just separating the dies with my little die cutting tool there and then I'm going to cut them out with different kinds of cardstock so obviously my my sprayed panels will be the physical birdhouse and then I brought in a white glitter cardstock for the roof and the little opening of the door to the birdhouse and I also brought in Simon's um silver matte cardstock to do the like hanging ribbon piece um, and then I showed you there that I put a piece of cardstock in between my plate and the die or and the colored panel because I knew that it was gonna like put color on it so I have had where I've not done that and then I've used it and then had color transfer onto other projects so I've gotten smarter about putting cardstock in between um, sprayed or blended panels and die cuts uh, so that there's less transfer of color and then this is what the birdhouses are going to look like once we have everything cut so i did go ahead and cut all of the pieces with my gemini and i use gemini junior plates in my gemini uh, i just find it way easier and then i also have a magic mat from scrapbook.com that i've been using that i quite enjoy i haven't uh, been using two plastic plates for quite a while just because I hate replacing them, it uh, really upsets me. So instead of buying the magic mat for a while there, I was actually just using a nine by 12 uh, self-healing mat that I cut in half that then fit through my Gemini with the junior plates. So I kind of Jimmy rig. So if you go back a few videos, you will have seen that instead. That's definitely an option, uh, but you will have to work on your sandwich for your machine. Um, generally, I do also include a cardstock shim in my machine as well just because it gives me the best cut um, but each machine is kind of an individual thing so you're going to have to play around with yours and figure out what works for you uh, and then you can see that when I put the little metallic ribbon on the top I do pounce off the glue just so it doesn't squeeze out um, I do have a heck of a time getting stuff to stick to glitter cardstock so I also have my acrylic block just holding down the uh, silver piece while it adheres and then I kind of laid out my birdhouses, how I wanted them on the background. I wanted them obviously in different heights, different like lengths, uh, just because it gives you some variation of the eye. And I think that it looks really cool. Um, and then I did go in my, my version of a rainbow color palette. So pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Uh, so that's just my preferred uh, color palette. And I went back and forth on whether or not I wanted to leave the doors in the little birdhouses. And you absolutely could. But I honestly kind of felt like it took away from the background a little bit. So I opted to leave the little door out. You can see them all stacked above there with the little, the little circles that came out of the doorway. But you could have left them in for sure. You know, this would actually look stunning in white and gold. I actually pondered it. I don't know if you guys have been on my channel for a, a minute, but I have a tendency to love to do white and gold things. So I might have to re remake this card in like a an elegant white and gold version just because I like white and gold. <laughs> I just think it's really pretty. But then I like bold colors too. So I kind of, I go back and forth. But and then I brought in my Nouveau Deluxe glue just to adhere my panel down to my black mat. I did use Barely Art glue for the fine tip when adhering all of the pieces down to the little birdhouse and then the birdhouse is down to the back or the panel just because uh, the fine tip. Um, use whatever glue works for you, of course. I just have a preference for liquid glue because it gives me a few minutes to shift around everything. Like here you can see that I'm actually making sure it lines up and that it's centered to my black mat. And then I like to use my Misty to weigh things down when I'm worried they're not going to adhere nicely. 
So I brought in my Misty again. This is just so I could stamp out my sentiment. And I have a sentiment from the Spellbinders Tweet Sentiments. It's a stamp set that was designed by Vicky Papineau. Um, I love it. I also have all her birdhouse dies. They're awesome. Uh, but I just thought that that was a really beautiful sentiment and it fit really well in that little space there. And I think that this is a card that would really brighten someone's day. Um, I mean, I look at it and I smile, but I love bright colors. So it kind of really does that for me. I just look at it and I just think it's amazing. I can sitting here looking at it right now and it just makes me smile. But but yeah, so then I adhered my panel down to my mat, uh, my base with the same Nouveau Deluxe glue and again took the time to line it up and shift it around and then put my Misty on top of it to make sure that it adhered properly. And then I brought in my shears. This is just so I could trim off the bits that are now still sticking off. Um, this is intentional. I left pieces sticking off because it gives you more, like it, it tricks your mind into thinking that there is more going on outside of the panel if that makes sense. So uh, I tend to do that pretty much every time I make a card. But yeah, so this is a closer look. You can get a look at all that beautiful glitter and the mirror cardstock and then that mica spray in the birdhouses. I just think it turned out really stunning and it just makes me smile every time I look at it. So I'm pretty excited about it. I would love to know what you guys think. I'd love if you'd consider subscribing, leave me a comment, leave me a like. I do new videos every Monday and Thursday and then extras whenever I've got something else going on. Thank you so much guys for stopping by and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.